I'm pulling up your list. Oh. <laughs> Go, we're recording. Yay! And then we were recording the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> okay, have you ever read Carvo? Carvo? Yeah, I've read that one. I just need to get to Legendary. Oh my god, we could buddy read that too because I haven't read Legendary, but I've read Carvo. Also, yes. look what I got! <gasps> <laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> Yes, that is like, I read that like back in March. I need like a reread of that book. I want to read it sometime later, but then I also don't know how far you've in that video, but look at the retelling show. Ooh, that is so cute. I know, and those, these are my, um, my twisted tales. Ooh. And that's straight on to Morning, which is Peter Pan and Cinderella. Ooh. Yes, and look how thick that is. That's, that's a thick boy right there. Look, I got the second book to it. Okay, back to your good reads. <laughs> Here's the second book to a good girl's guide. Oh my god, yes. And I can't wait to talk to you about good girl's guide. Yes. I'm excited. Oh my god, I need to read they both die at the end. That's almost over. I have that as well. Mm -hmm. I have that as well. They both die at the end. Yes, 
I think wasn't that for like our Christmas read-a-thon like group book? I don't know. I know that they got that one, and then I also want to read Ten Blind Dates for Christmas. Ooh, I'll probably get that one here soon. Oh my god, these books will not go back in my cart. <laughs> my friend works um, in a high school as like the media center guy or whatever, and so he's giving me a ton of books and everything. He likes to read YA a lot, so he would tell the blind names and he was sitting there laughing and saying how hysterical it was and telling that he needs to read it. Well, that's good. Get it um, soon because I want to read it for October. 
Are we talking about this one? My knees picked it up. So big, like, look how big that is. You could use that as a weapon. <laughs> Hold on. This book is so big. Cat's words, you can use it as a weapon. I'm gonna chuck it at ya. <laughs> I had to. Oh no, I found that long ago, sorry. Recording. We're back. We're back. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, 
Alright. Should I show them? Right, show them the stack for mm -hmm. September? What? Are we showing them the stack for September? Yeah, we can just show them that. What each of them is. Yes. <laughs> Alright. So, if you guys missed the beginning of the video, my friend Kat at Bookish Reads. Say hi, Kat. Hi. <laughs> she picked out the book called Cinder from the Little Chronicles by Marissa Mayer. Meyer? Meyer. Meyer. I, I was close. <laughs> Alright, even in the future, the story begins with Once Upon a Time. Ooh. I love the series. <laughs> Ooh, it's about humans I'm and... Reading. <laughs> it's about humans and androids crowded the outrageous streets of Nubenji. Oh. Yeah. This sounds really good. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I love how you buy a book and don't know what <laughs> I book by blind. <laughs> it's each book is based off of a different fairy tale and they're all fairy tale reads and tellings in a sci-fi aspect. Ooh, that sounds even better. So it's Cinderella, um, Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, and Snow White. Ooh, and I have all of those. And then there's one based off of the Evil Queen and the short story book. Ooh, that sounds good. Just in camera. There we go. Okay. And then the next one we have is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I don't know too much about it, but I heard it's good. Good. You're not supposed to know anything about it. Okay, I can't know anything about it, so I won't read the blurb. Okay, all I'm going to tell you is pretty much... It's, okay, so there's, like, a plot, and that's why the story's so good, because there's a plot that has to, like, you know, there has to be a plot to have the story. But right. it's mainly about, like, her mental health, because she suffers from, like, OCD and anxiety. Ooh, I get anxiety. So the whole book is about how she, like, overcomes that and how she deals with that and different things. And it's so good. Ooh. I can't wait to talk to you about it. So this one so definitely sounds like it's going to be right up my alley. Alright, and then the next book I want to hopefully try to get around to is the second book to The Darkest Minds, which is Never Fade by Alexandria Bracken. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm yes. going to tell you right now, the second book was probably my least favorite, but you have to read it so that you can read the third book. Well, if I remember correctly, at the end of the last movie of the book, that Ruby gets rid of this one guy's memories of her because she like um, kissed him so, yeah. oh yeah she did oh my goodness i forgot about that cliffhanger <laughs> you forgot about that yeah like no i'm not it's a totally the most emotional part of the book <laughs> like, you know, yeah she's i can't remember his name for the life of me but she oh um, liam Lucas? no it's liam liam yeah i just seen the name down <laughs> Oh my God, I need to reread that so badly. Yes. So I'm curious to see what happens, you know, from after the first book into the second one. See if he gets his memories back and gets mad at her for like deleting her from his life. Like, mmm, why would you do that? People. Alright, and then the next one I have is When Would You Want to Know by Victoria Laurie. And from all I somewhat know about this, hmm? from when, I'm trying to remember what it's about. I think she like can know for she like when. She gets death dates, so like anybody, there's like death dates on their foreheads, and then when there's a murder, she basically will tell people like when their kid or whoever's gonna die by looking at a picture, and when there's a murder in her town, she was the one who told the mother that her kid was gonna die that day so then she has to go and everybody thinks that she kidnapped them and different things oh. it's a very autumn book because it's like murder mystery style kind of like what happened to the kid and then all this other stuff now that definitely sounds good for september <laughs> have you read um what of us is lying yeah i read that last month yeah 
It was good. I read it too. Definitely. All right. And then the next one we have picked out is the Bells. Ooh, I'm going to butcher this last name. Danielle Clayton. Danielle Clayton. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we have cat. A twist world, a beautiful power. Ooh, the end papers are like gorgeous. Aren't they? They're like pink, like a like a hot kind yeah. of pink. So what this is basically about is there was a goddess and a god, and one day um, they had children, and the god of the sky, I think, she it was a god of the sky and the goddess of beauty. And the god got mad because the goddess of beauty was always with her children. She, like, was always down there and never up in the sky with him. Ooh. So he got mad and took beauty away from the world so that everything was just gray and bleh and not good. So then she sent her children down as the bells to go, and basically people will pay them to make them beautiful and for them to have color and different things. Ooh. And the royal family each gets um a certain bell that's a sign like the highest bell in power or whatever mm -hmm. so the main bell whose name i can't remember ends up having to go and mm. try to be the queen's bell like her mother or her sister or something i think it's camilla camilla yes camilla okay i try <laughs> you're good you do a whole lot better than i do <laughs> it's been a little while but we try all right, and then the last book that we have picked out is These Witches Don't Burn by Isabella Sterling. I haven't read that one yet. I can't say anything about it. <laughs> All right, Hannah's a witch, but not the kind you're thinking of. She's the real deal, uh, el elemental with the power to control fire, earth, water, and air. But even though she lives in Salem, Massachusetts, <laughs> Fail. Massachusetts, there we go. Her magic is a secret she has to keep to herself. If she's ever caught using in front of a reg read non witch, she could lose it for good. So Hannah spends most of her time avoiding her ex girlfriend and fellow intimental witch. Veronica hanging out with her best friend and working at the flyby night cauldron selling candles and crystals to tourists, goths, and local witticans. And that's all I'm gonna get the blurb on to the witches don't burn. Cause it's been out for a while, but mm, I'm behind as usual. Alright you guys, that is all I have for part of the September's TBR. It's Played. We're already into September, but it's fine. We're good. <laughs> We're fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I get it up soon and it'll work out. It definitely. I couldn't set it better myself. <laughs> All right, and I will see you guys in a new video, hopefully very very soon. And want to thank Kat for joining us today. Of course, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, we had fun picking out. The books. I will try to insert a clip before and then like the little blurbs after because you know that's always fun. Alright and we will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye! Hi guys we are back finally to film the rest of my books for my TBR for this month and as I calculated how many I have next to me is a ridiculous amount of stacks, but we're fine. We're fine. We're gonna get through this, we hope. Okay, that's still. Sorry, trying to maneuver my camera. There we go. Okay. Alright, and like we talked about. The other night, this is the stack that my best friend Kat picked out for me, so we will definitely be getting into these as well. And then we're going to talk about the stack that my niece picked out for me. 
which is this small stack, which is awesome. But this is stack that I picked out for myself as well. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time, and we're only on the second day of September, and there's only like 30 days. Can I read all this many books in 30 days? I guess stay tuned and find out, because we don't even know, but we're gonna try. Alright. The first one I'm gonna talk about is Because You Love to Hate Me. It's 13 Tales of Villainy, edited by Emery, I think. I probably just butchered that and I'm so sorry. But it's also a bunch of different authors like Renee Adier, Emery, which I, I try, Simone Ch oh gosh. Chang Chania. Oh, I don't even. I'm so sorry. Susan Dennard, Sarah Annie, Marissa Meyer, Cindy Pond, Victoria Schwab, Samantha Shannon, Adam Silvera, Andrew Smith, April Gwenevy, Toloki, I think, Nicola Yoon, and then in collaboration with the 13 booktubers. And that's all on the back, and I cannot wait to get to this. Something Wicked This Way Comes. In this unique anthology, 13 acclaimed best-selling authors team up with 13 influential booktubers to remain the origin stories of the villains we love to hate. In famous foes from fairy tales, mythology, and brand new worlds. Based on comic book inspired enemies in pop culture, and classics such as Medusa from Greek mythology, Monterey from Sherlock Holmes, and the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk. These fractured, unconventional spins of retail each character story in in an unoriginal, unexpected way. This behind the curtain look at the villains explores the pain, heartbreak, and sorrow that set up on the road to bad and questions whether or not anyone is truly born evil. No fairy tale will ever quite be the same again. And that is because you love to hate me. And like I said, I'm super excited to get to this soon. Oh, love it. Alright, and then the next one she picked out is The List by Shobahan Vivian. I got the last name right. Like I said, I try my best, but... Alright. Prettiest to ugliest. It happens every year before homecoming. The list is posted all over school. Two girls are picked from each grade. One is named the prettiest, one the ugliest. The girls who aren't even picked are quickly forgotten. The girls who be the girls who are become the center of attention and each reacts differently to the experience. Abby's joy at being named the prettiest is clouded by her sister's restatement. Danielle worries about her boyfriend will take the news. Lauren is homeschool girl blindsided by her instant popularity. Candace isn't ugly, not even close, so it must be a mistake. Bridget knows her summer transformation isn't something to celebrate. Sarah has always rebelled against the traditional standards of beauty and she decides to take her immunity to the next level. And Mario and Jennifer, ex-best friends who haven't spoken in years, are forced to confront why the relationship ended. With the list, Savion Vivian defiantly takes you into the lives of eight very different girls struggling with the issues of identity, self-esteem, and the judgments of their peers. Prettiest or ugliest, once you're on the list, you'll never be the same. It does kind of sound good, and I've had it on my shelves forever, so 
this month might be the month. Alright, and then the next book she picked out was Confessions of a High School Disaster Freshman Year by Emma Chaston. We don't know a whole lot about this one, but it definitely sounds like it's another one of those high school drama books, and that's the reason why she picked this one. We're going with it. I'm Chloe Snow, and my life is kind of a disaster. One, I'm a kissing virgin, so, so embarrassing. Two, my best friend Hannah is driving me insane. Three, I think I'm in love with Mac Brody, a senior football star whose girlfriend is so beautiful, she doesn't even need eyeliner. Four, my dad won't stop asking if I'm okay. Five, Oh, and my mom moved to Mexico to work on her novel, but it's fine. She'll be back soon. She said so. Mom says the only thing sadder than remembering is forgetting. So I'm going to write down everything that happens to me in this diary. That way, even when I'm 90, I'll remember how awkward and horrible and exciting it's going to be in high school. dramatic pause. <laughs> We're gonna move on from this one. Alright, and then the next book she picked out is Love or Loser by Tessa Bailey. I heard a little bit of good things about it. It sounds really good. It looks really cute. Rosie and Dominic Vega are the perfect couple. High school sweethearts to best friends. Madly in love. Well, they used to be, anyway. Now, Rosie's lucky to get a caveman grunt from the ex-soldier every time she walks in the door. Dom is a faithful and great provider, but the man she fell in love with ten years ago is nowhere to be found. When Rosie's girlfriends encourage her to demand more out of life and pursue her dream of opening up a restaurant, she decides to demand more out of love, too. Three words. Marriage boot camp. Ooh. Never in a million years did Rosie believe her suck. Too manly to emote. Husband would actually agree to relationship rehab. With a weed smoking hippie, Dom talking about feelings, sitting on pillows, communicating with nature, learning love language. Nope. But Rosie's surprised he's all in and forces her to admit her own role in their cracked foundation. As these two complete one ridiculous yet surprisingly helpful assignment for assignment after another, their remodeled relationship gets stronger than ever. Except just as they're getting back on track, Rosie discovers Dom has a secret and it could demolish everything. Oh, now I'm wanting to know what that is, but like you said, it sounds super good and uh, looks fairly short, so I should be able to get it done soonish. So here's that. It almost took my eye out. Ah. All right, the next one she picked out, which I love that she picked out because it's a Riverdale book. And if you guys didn't know about this, I'm obsessed with Riverdale. I have a few fuckles of Riverdale, so. Love it! Alright, and the Riverdale book I have is called Riverdale The Day Before, a prequel novel by Mikhail Osto. We tried. Alright. In the early morning hours on the 4th of July, a gunshot rings out in Sweetwater River, turning the sleepy town of Riverdale upside down. But what did life look like the day before everything had changed? Before Jason Blossom went missing, four teens were taking advantage of their summer freedom. Archie was in love. Betty was Betty was conquering her LA internship. Veronica was running Manhattan and Jughead was just trying to get by. 
so we hope we like it. Because I have the other books in the series, so we hope we like it. Alright, and then the last book she had picked out is Beast, A Tale of Love and Revenge by Lisa Jensen. Now this cover looks gorgeous. And I'm only going to read what's on the back instead of what's on the inside because I kind of want to go into it blind. When is beauty shaped by ugliness? When does a simple fairy tale give way to the dark textures beneath its surface? When Lisa Jensen takes it on, that's when. A Beast, A Tale of Love and Revenge is a love story and so much more. Ooh. Nothing underneath. Alright, those are the books that my niece had picked down. Now we're going to jump into the video further of the books that I want to read and one that I'm currently in the middle of and it's everything. Alright, now this one I have definitely had on my shelves for a little while. It is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard and I've heard mixed reviews about this, I've heard good things about this and I just kind of want to go in and see for myself and like I said I don't want to know too much about it. Except for, on a continent ruled by three empires, some are born with a witchery, a magical skill that sets them apart from the others. Ooh, that's all I'm going to say about this one, because I kind of want to go into this one blind as well. But it's definitely on my radar. And then, I did get a book called These Shadows by Alex North. I haven't read one of his books yet, but I also have The Whisper Man, so if I like this one, I will definitely check that one out, hopefully very soon. And let's get into what this one is about, shall we? They believed they could control their dreams. Instead, they created a nightmare. Ooh, sounds intriguing so far. You knew a teenager like Charlie Cuptree, Crabtree. A dark imagination, a sinister smile always on the outside of the group. Some part of you suspected he might be capable of doing something awful. 25 years ago, Cabtree did it just that, committing a murder so shocking that it's attracted that strange kind of infamy that only exists on the darkest corners of the internet and has inspired more than one copycat. Paul Adams remembers the case all too well. Crabtree and his victim were Paul's friends. Paul has slowly put his life back together, but now his mother, old and suffering from detenia, has taken a turn for the worst. Though every inch of him resists, it is time to come home. It's not long before things start to go wrong. Paul learns that Detective Amanda Beck is investigating another copycat that has struck in the nearby town of Featherbank. His mother is distressed. Instant that there's something in the house and someone is following him, which reminds him of the most unsettling thing about that awful day 25 years ago. It wasn't just a murder, it was the fact that after what Charlie Crabtree was never seen again. And that is the shadows and it sounds super creepy and super good and all the Halloween feels or close to the Halloween feels, you know? Alright, another book I definitely want to get more into, I tried picking it up before, just never really gotten around to reading it, and that is Winterwood by Shira Earnshaw. She is the author who wrote The Wicked Deep and my battery is flashing at me because it's gonna die. I guess we will be back and I will continue more on what Winterwood is after the, the battery is charged. I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, we are finally back after the battery charges. And we left off on Winterwood by Shia Earnshaw. Like I said, she is the author who wrote 
The Wicked Deep, in which I loved when I read it. Oh, I need a reread of that. But I will quickly explain what this one is about. The Walker Woman of Fire or Fear Haven have always lived in the woods. Some say the first Walker Woman came from the forest. Her bones built of roots and thorns as she sprouted from the ground. This is where their legacy began, a strange and mythical legacy rooted in rumors and folklore. Over the years, there have been many tales of a walker woman. Most have been lost stories, forgotten, fables, and myths washed away with the spring rains. This story is one such tale. It once scattered like autumn leaves, buried in the soil, stitched there until it arose, until something stirred it loose, until the forest shuddered and opened its eyes. It sounds creepy and chilly and just perfect for spooky season. And yes, we did do it like this. Alright, the other book I want to talk about, I'm already eight chapters into, and I am loving it, and it's a very well-known book here on BookTube, and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Rothfuss? Pretty close. But, I am going to explain what it's about. My name is Curl. I have stolen the princess back from Sleeping Borrow Kings. I burned down the town of Trabone. I have spent the night with Deloren and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from the university at a younger age than most people are accepted in. I trade months or I trade paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during the day. I have talked to God's loved woman and written songs that make the mind steals weep. You may have heard of me. And like I said so far this is really good. I'm on chapter 8. Uh, it's... Ooh, I like it. And this is a gorgeous edition with the red st a red stained edges. Words are hard. <sighs> Alright, we're going to move on from the name of the wind. And the next book I'm kind of into, but I haven't gotten very, very far into, which is Heartwood Box by Anne Argue. In this tiny, terrifying town, the lost are never found. There are no murders on the books. No suicides, either. They write in the paper that this is the safest town in New York State. But here, people just vanish. Their bodies are never found. And it's got a creepy cover. I'm like obsessed. Okay. We have three more books we're going to hopefully try to get through. And hopefully I can read this ridiculous amount of stack. And then I have a couple audiobooks. But I'm not going to mention them. Just in case if I don't get to them. It'll be fine. Moving on. The other book I definitely want to get into is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. And I've heard a little bit of good things. My Alexa went off. No, Alexa. No! Why? Alright, here we go. A young woman living in a rigid, puritanical society discovers dark powers within herself in this stunning feminist fantasy debate. 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 Moving on. In the lands of Bethel, where the prophet's word is law, Emilio Moore's 
very existence is blasphemy. Her mother's union with another outsider of a different race cast her once proud family into disgrace. So Emmanuel does her best to worship the father, follow holy protocol, and lead a life of submission, devotion, and absolute conformity like all the other women in the settlement. But a mishap lures her into the forbidden dark was surrounded Bethel where the first prophecy once chased and killed four powerful witches. Their spirits are still lurking there and they bestow a gift on Emmanuel, the journal of her dead mother, who Emmanuel is shocked to learn once saw sanctuary in the wood. Fascinated by the secrets in the diary, Emmanuel finds herself struggling to understand how her mother could have consorted with the witches. But when she begins to learn grim truths about the church and its history, she realizes the true threat to Bethel is its own darkness, and she starts to understand that if Bethel is to change, it must begin with her. Now that sounds good too. All these great books, and my stack keeps getting bigger and bigger. Alright, these last two books I'm going to talk about are two different Stephen King books. One, I believe it currently is a TV show. I haven't watched it, but I, I've seen it around. But I want to read the book before I get into the show, you know what I mean? Like, so I know what I'm getting myself into. And for that one, it is called The Outsider. And it's really creepy from what I remember reading. An unspeakable crime, an abundance of evidence, a confounding investigation. In The Outsider, Stephen King delivers one of his most unsettling and compulsively readable stories. An 11 year old boy's violated corpse is found in a town park. Eyewitness and fingerprints point unmistakably to one of Flint City's most popular citizens. He is Terry Maitland, Little League coach, English teacher, husband, and father of two girls. Detective Ralph Anderson, who's son Matt Land once coach orders a quick and a very public arrest. The case seems ironic clad especially when Anderson and the district authority are able to add DNA evidence to go with fingerprints and witnesses. But Maiden Land has an alibi and it turns out his story has in control vertible evidence of its own. How can two people opposing stories be true? What happens to a family when an accusation of its managed guy is delivered? When must reason or rationality be abandoned in order to explain the unexplicable? As the investigation expands and horrifying answers begin to emerge, Keen's propulsive story kicks into high gear, generating a strong tension and almost unbearable suspense. Terry Maitland seems like a nice guy, but is he wearing another face? When the answer comes, it will shock as only Stephen King can. Dum dum dum. <laughs> that was the outsider. That was intense reading. Alright, and then the last book I want to hopefully try to get to, if not this month, hopefully next month sometime. And that is If It Bleeds by Stephen King. This is his new book that came out this year and that I got my hands on for my birthday and I'm so excited to write it. Okay. In January of 2021. Oh no. <laughs> A 
a small padded envelope addressed to Detective Ralph Anderson is delivered to the Conrads, the Andersons' next door neighbors. The Anderson family is on an extended vacation in the Bahamas. Printed on this envelope in large letters is do not forward hold for arrival. When Ralph opens the package, he finds a flash drive titled, If It Bleeds. Ooh. Presumably referring to the old news trope which proclaims, If it bleeds, it leads. The drive holds a kind of report or spoken word diary from Holly Gibney, with whom the detective shared a case that began in Oklahoma and ended in a Texas cave. It was a case that changed Ralph Anderson's perpetration of reality forever. The final words of Holly's audio report are from an, an entry dated December 19, 2020. <gasps> she sounds out of breath. I have done the best I can, Ralph, but it may not have been enough. In spite of all my planning, there's a chance I won't come out of this alive. If I do die and choose to continue what I have started, please be careful. You have a wife and a son. Oh my god, is this a sequel to The Outsiders? Because it's definitely what it's sounding like. Okay, so I definitely can't read this without reading this first. Okay. Alright, and there you guys have it. That is my very huge, large stack of books I want to try to read for this month. So, <laughs> stay tuned for the wrap-up. I haven't been doing wrap-ups lately, but I might for this one because there's a ton of books. And I'm also working on the second book to A Clash of Kings by Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. So, might get this done this month. We don't know, but we're hoping. Alright, but that is the final book stacks that I definitely want to try to get into and if you're new here go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there and the notification bell to get emails anytime I post new videos and I will see you guys very very soon in another new video don't know when but eventually soon all right bye guys